There are now two different MacBook Air sizes, 13 inch and 15 inch. And although they are very similar, there are a few differences that you should consider before buying one. In this video, I'll compare both in everything from portability, battery life, speakers, performance, and if those extra two inches in screen size are really worth the extra cost. Let's start with pricing. The 13 inch M2 MacBook Air base model is 1,099 US dollars versus 1,299 for the 15 inch version. But if you actually look at the specs of both devices, the 15 inch comes with an additional two GPU cores compared to the 13 inch. If you want these extra GPU cores on the 13, you need to pay an extra $100. So realistically, the price difference is actually only a hundred bucks between the two. Will those extra two GPU cores even make much of a difference though? Well, here are some performance comparisons. They'll give you roughly a 15 to 20% increase max, but only in situations where you're actively using the GPU, like games or rendering a video or 3D image. Moving on to size, the 15 inch version is just barely thicker and is about half a pound heavier. The main difference here, apart from the trackpad, which is functionally identical despite the size difference, is simply the larger footprint. 13 inches is more portable, fits into bags easily, and fits on airplane tray tables easier, among other things. Also, if you already have 13 inch accessories, like a protective case or a laptop bag for a 13 inch laptop, for example, the larger 15 inch size probably isn't going to fit. and You might have to buy new ones. I think the main takeaway here is that even though the 15 inch is bigger, it's still super thin and lightweight compared to other 15 inch laptops. So portability is still really good. And don't underestimate the advantages of a larger screen when it comes to actually using the laptop. I find that a 13 inch screen can sometimes feel a little bit cramped and the UI of certain websites or apps just don't seem to fit very well. That extra two inches really adds a significant amount of screen real estate and will give you a big productivity boost. Take Excel for example. You can see here highlighted in green just how much more space you get on the 15 inch without having to scroll, zoom, or reduce scaling. Movies are more enjoyable, especially when watching with someone else, but the biggest advantage in my opinion is being able to have two apps or web pages open next to each other. Now, this is obviously possible on the 13 inch, but only just. The 15 inch version makes it so much more enjoyable and functional, and it's perfect for students or professionals, for example, who frequently have multiple things open at once or multitask. Sure, I mean, you have virtual desktops as well, but sometimes you just can't beat having two things open side by side. Is all of this worth an extra 100 bucks and slightly less portability? It's certainly tempting. Now, apart from the size, what are the other differences? The short answer is almost none. The 15 inch Air is essentially a stretched out version of the 13 inch. Same retina resolution screen, same 1080p webcam, same ports, but there are a few minor differences. The 15 inch has an improved six speaker system, and this is really only relevant if you use the speakers often, but there is a noticeable difference. Take a listen. Now the battery life is also identical. I mean, I couldn't find any kind of major differences between the two. Even though on Apple's product page, the 13 inch has a smaller 52.6 watt hour battery versus the larger 66.5 watt hour battery on the 15 inch. The bigger 15 inch screen requires a little more juice to run and this kind of cancels out the larger battery size. Now, when it comes to performance, remember that underneath the hood, both MacBooks are rocking the exact same M2 chip, with the exception of the previously mentioned extra two GPU cores, which is included on the 15 inch base model, but optional on the 13. Apart from that, you really won't notice a difference between either one, no matter if you're compiling code, multitasking with a ton of apps open at the same time, editing videos or photos or gaming. This also extends to heat and thermal performance. The larger 15 inch chassis 
doesn't really impact the thermals noticeably. Both models rely on a thin metal heat spreader to dissipate heat into the aluminum chassis of the MacBook. And as I found in previous videos, the M2 Air really doesn't get that hot anyway. I mean, if you're a lap user and you're doing something intensive like gaming, the 15 inch might be a little bit more comfortable because you can position the hottest part a bit further away from your thigh. But that's a pretty niche scenario. I mean, <laughs> Not many people are even pushing these laptops to the point where they get that hot anyway. Now, one odd difference is that you get the 35 watt dual USB-C port compact power adapter included with the 15 inch air, but on the 13 inch, it's $20 extra over the standard 30 watt option. Now, this is really up to personal preference, whichever one you wanna buy. Personally, I went with the dual port charger because it charges faster and is also great for traveling with the dual USB-C ports. You can also pick up Apple's travel adapter kit and swap out the plug for one that works in the country you're traveling to. Now, regardless of which size you go with, the available RAM and SSD upgrades are the same. If you can stretch your budget, going with 16 gigabytes of RAM is always a good choice. It'll give you a little bit of headroom for heavy multitasking, or when using certain RAM intensive apps. I go into this in much more detail in my M2 MacBook RAM video, linked in the description if you're interested. Just remember that you cannot add or upgrade RAM on these MacBooks after you buy them. The same goes for the SSD. Although you can attach an external SSD to the MacBook for additional storage after the fact. Note that you will get faster SSD speeds by going to the 512 gigabyte SSD over the base model 256 gigabyte SSD. Again, I have a separate video on this that I will link in the description. So which one is best? Well, I don't really think price difference is a huge issue here. I mean, if you take into account the extra two GPU cores and the inclusion of the better charger on the 15 inch base model, both of which are good upgrades, all in all, the 15 inch is only 80 bucks more than the equivalent 13 inch version. And if I didn't explicitly mention something in this video, like the difference in speakers, for example, it's because they're exactly the same. I think the only reason to avoid the 15 inch version is if portability is super important to you. And even then, I still think the 15 inch is super portable, especially compared to other 15 or 16 inch laptops out there. I mean, just look at how thin this thing is. Regardless of which you choose, they're both solid options, and I doubt you'll regret it either way.